Welcome to Sales Velocity TV, where we pull back the curtain on how the top businesses in the world sell more with less resistance. Bringing over 50 plus years of combined sales experience and over 100 million in revenue generated, please welcome the hosts of Sales Velocity TV and two incredibly entertaining gentlemen, Andrew Cass and Aaron Parkinson. Oh, and we're pulling back the curtain today on the three must-haves for selling premium price products and services. This is like the holy grail here. And by the way, Aaron, no premium price products and services in your product mix. Very weak economics in the business model, right? I have to consult a lot of clients on a weekly basis where their product line is too shallow. They don't have any premium price products. I'm like, look, traffic's getting more expensive. Yep. Economics don't work out, you know. And let's be honest, I would way rather deal with people who are buying premium products than people who are buying. And by the know. way, just in this morning, CNBC just reported that at the time of this show, we are at December 10th, 2021, highest inflation numbers in 62 years, I believe, or 52 years. So. If you're not in a premium price product and service scenario, you need to get into one because you're going to need to offset the high cost of everything in society these days. And the funny thing about inflation, Aaron, which a lot of people don't realize, they're just, I guess, you know, we're as humans optimistic by nature, is when inflation takes a big jump up, it doesn't usually go back down. It usually just levels out. So this yeah. becomes like a new normal, which kind of sucks for all of us because as we've seen food prices and gas prices and home prices and stock market prices and everything just inflate, Normally, it just levels out. It doesn't go back down and take a massive dip all that often. No, I was so actually. So, that's at, what we need to be thinking about here as, as business owners. I was looking at a report, a real estate report in the US, I don't know, maybe a week ago, and it said the expectation is based on the, the statistics right now that by February, the rocket ride of appreciating real estate is going to come to an end and it's going to level out. But the expectation isn't that it's going to drop back down. The expectation is that it's just going to level. So that's this is my the, point. This is the new norm. You know, that is my forward. point. So that is not a I mean, it's not encouraging news, but you need to know about things before they happen or as they're happening so you can prepare for. It. So good time to talk about this here today. I know you have a formula that you want to talk about here today, which is basically how to structure premium price products and services, but then how to deliver it. Yeah, th there's a lot of there's a lot of people that want to do premium price products or doing premium price products or think they're doing premium price products the right way. And there's a lot of room for improvement. And we see this a lot, right? Because when you're dealing with, you know, lower tier products, there's a lot of room to get away with a lot of average behavior, <laughs> right? Um, you like to talk a lot on this show about your experiences with different businesses and, you know, they're, they're selling average price products and they don't do a whole lot in their presentation, their follow-up, their, their, their customer experience, you know, but when you start selling premium price products, it's a completely different ball game. And, and, and the, the best real life I can example I can give is go, go into a Toyota car dealership and then go into a Mercedes car dealership you're going to see a completely different ballgame of how you are handled, right? However, yeah. however, on that note, yes. However, I've seen slippage even in that, shockingly, sure. over and the I've years. And I've seen on the low end where they're yeah. remarkable, right? I'm saying on average. On average. Predominantly, right? yes. So what we really wanted to do today was share the framework that we use, we've used for decades, to ensure that both you and the customer have the best experience possible when selling premium price products. Right. Right. So we really broke it down into three specific areas today, which is the presentation or the pitch, right? The agreement and the onboarding. The okay. three pillars, baby. Yeah, three pillars. And it's people will, will hear something of like that and they'll go, that's obvious. Makes sense. However, right? are you doing it, right? But there's details. The devil's always in the details. Mm -hmm. And right? listen, to preface this, for those of you that don't know us, we go back about 15, 16 years. We were selling high ticket from stage at live events predominantly 
because the internet was in such early stages when we began online that selling high ticket almost never happened. I say high ticket, high ticket, premium price premium prices, price products. you know, things that are relatively expensive, you know, not your, not your, your entry level product price points. But the reason we were doing it from stage is because when we got started online, like there weren't webinars yet, they were just sort of happening. Right. And that's a, that's a, that's a venue today that you can sell a lot of high-priced, premium-priced products and services on. Zoom and Skype on. were non-existent. Right? There was no social media. There was no video. Webinars were like, you'd get on GoToWebinar and be able to do a pitch. And it was like Nirvana when people were able to start selling premium-priced products and services off of a webinar versus a live event. So we, yeah. have, we have sold millions and millions and millions of dollars of high-priced uh, high products and services from stage where at the time we were using the internet as a way to market worldwide to get people into events to then sell high priced products and services. Now that still happens. I think the best conversions today will always be a live events, but what we're going to talk about today is the framework that you can use from stage, from a webinar, one-to-one -one on a zoom to sell it, to service it and to set the right expectations. But I wanted to set the stage on that because it just gave me a little, you know, fun flashback on where did, where did all this begin Nostalgia, for us? And I just, deja vu. Yeah, and the amount, I mean, selling from stage is, is for me, it's, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do. I know for you, it is as well. Well, it wasn't uncommon for us when we first met to sell a million dollars from stage in one day. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And, right, and then as the internet became a little bit more trusted, mature, trusted, trusted, um, you know, we've heard of people selling, you know, 15 to $20 million in a day. Um, in, in big product launches big product launches, leveraging the power of the internet, mm -hmm. right? What I'm, and, and like you, you said, this framework makes sense in any venue that you choose, live, webinar. Uh, I'm, I'm a big one-on-one -on -one Zoom person. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the majority of where, you know, my day-to-day -day operations lie. I know that you're very similar in that respect. And so I'm gonna be talking about it more through my filter today, but it could be applied to any Exactly. Any venue. The framework is the framework. Here's one other thing I want to point out. I like to. I'm. I'm I like to look at hit, look at where we are, but then look at history, and then look at where we are and where we've come. Right. So the funny thing about selling high price products and services today is that it began offline, pre-internet. Right. Everybody was selling in person, on stage, in an office, on the telephone. Right. I came up in the telephone business. Right. right. As you know, and many of our listeners know, as a young stockbroker in New York before there was even an internet, we only had the phone. And we just got a lot of people on the phone. We did direct mail. It was direct mail phone, direct mail phone, direct mail phone. That was pretty much the model, right? What's interesting is when the internet came, the 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 ability to sell products and services online was like seeing fire. It was, oh my gosh, I can actually sell online. What's interesting today is we've gone 360, where very few high price product services get sold online today. In a webinar, it used to be automatic. You could sell two to 10K on a webinar, no problem. Today, we've moved back, and you've noticed this trend too, where people will use webinars today to get a one on one call booked to yep. then sell a high ticket premium price product and service. Where in years past, maybe up until about three or four years ago, they would go right for the premium price sale on a webinar and make it happen. It's interesting that in the last couple of years, we're not seeing the same premium price buying online. It's gone back to offline or one-on-one. -on -one, and it's really interesting to see how that's come 360. So now the internet is the venue to get the appointment, so to speak, or get someone yeah. at an event to then be able to offer premium price products and services. It's really been an interesting trend that, to watch over just, about the last 12 years. That's a trend years. that, you know, because, you know, we, you know, we've done almost a billion dollars in sales over the last, you know, 15 years that we've known each other you see trends happen in marketing, right? And the trends happen because the market drives it, right? right? And the market becomes saturated with one way of doing something and then they become more sophisticated and then all of a sudden your conversions go down, right? Right on, right on. So, the, you know, it, it went from like sales letter to VSL to webinar, back to VSL to, you know, webinar or VSL to book an appointment to webinar to book an appointment to like, it just, it, you have to keep your eyes obviously on what's working and what's not, and you've got to test it. But again, we're not here to talk about marketing funnels today. We're here to talk about frameworks if you're selling a premium price product. And I think what I'll start with, just to really make sure that, that we're clear on this, right? There is no reason 
to sell a product for a bunch of money just to sell a product for a bunch of money. First things first, you better be damn sure that your premium priced product is attached to a premium service, mm. right? There's a lot of people who get into this and they go, oh, I, I didn't know that you could sell premium priced products. I'm gonna slap something together, right? And just put a big price tag on it. That is a recipe for disaster, right? And, re so, and reputational damage. Huge reputational damage. Right, refunds, chargebacks, nonsense. Complaints online, PR, bad PR, yeah, so right? this is. You better make sure that you have a premium product if you're gonna sell something at a premium price, right? And a lot of that usually comes down to the level of pain that you solve, the level of service that you offer, the speed to result. You know, there's many elements that go to into a premium price product. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna kick it off today with the actual presentation, the pitch, right? And, and again, I'm speaking through the filter of, you know, talking to somebody on a Zoom, right? Lead generation, talking to somebody on a Zoom, right? For me, I always wanna make sure that my premium price product has really solved every major pain point that my prospect has. And if, and if that prospect doesn't have those pain points, I wanna make sure that it's clear to them that this is not the right fit for them, right? It's really a message to market match that's important. So because I'm big on research, you know, the product that I'm offering, I know exactly what the problems are that people face, my ideal avatar. I know what keeps them up late at night. I know when things have been missing in the product, it's made them feel like they've been burned before. So I've made sure that I've put those things in, right? I make sure I meet them exactly where they're at in their journey. So every time I open my mouth and I explain what I have, they're checking these boxes in their head. Yes, this solves this problem. Yes, this solves this problem. Yes, this solves the issue I had with the last person who said they can solve this problem. Yes, 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 yes. So by the time I actually get to the price, they're so pre-sold emotionally on me and I've done enough research and work in developing the product that the value seems like it it's double what I'm charging, right? And in many cases, when I tell people the price of what I'm offering, they go, is that it, right? And, and our, you know, my commitments with the, the clients that I'm speaking at or speaking with, you know, they start at 50,000, right? So a lot of people in their mind would say, it starts at 50,000? And they'd say, there's no way that somebody could come on to a Zoom with you and say, is that it? But because I'm meeting the right person at the right point, solving the right problems that are gonna create the right amount of revenue for that client, to them, it actually seems like a steal. Right, and that's because I've done the research, I've put the things in place, and I'm solving their problems at such a high level that it's a no-brainer for them to make that decision. Right? Yeah. Just sold, just sold one this morning. Right, yep. about ten minutes before we got on this call. Right? Yeah, and, and th the thing I want to point out about the presentation piece also is what that's called is getting into agreement with your prospect throughout the presentation. So very few do that. They like to jump right to the solution and all the reasons why this is the best. And, you know, financial industry, financial services does this like better than anyone. We've been in business 60 years. We're licensed with this, 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 and this, and we, 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 we. And it's all about them. But the real, I don't, want, I don't know if I want to call it a technique, but the real way to communicate and persuade is to get into their head and get into agreement with them that you can solve that problem. And, and this getting into agreement piece is such an important piece of any presentation because if you're not in agreement, then it's going to be just, you're going to be button heads all the way through or you're going to get a whole bunch of I need to think about it and that means never, right? So the getting into agreement, like you said, the yes path, it's called the yes path too, like really connecting and getting into agreement with the prospect and making sure you're on the same page leads to a really high conversion rate on, on premium price products. Yeah, and I would, I would support that with the other side of it, right? Which is that a lot of people when they're doing premium price sales, 
they will over promise and under deliver. Yeah. Because they're so excited to make the sale. It's a rookie mistake. Yep. And so when I'm having these conversations, because that's what they are, they aren't sales pitches. I have consultative conversations to see if they're the right fit for me and I'm the right fit for them. And, and what I'm offering is the ideal match. There's at least one or two instances in these conversations where people say, okay, great. Do you do this too? Do you do this too? And the rookie mistake is people go, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we do that too. Or yeah, that's included. I'm very clear. We do not do that. 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 Or they'll try to take me down a path of, you know, can we do this any faster? Because part of my presentation is it's going to take 30 days to do this, 30 days to do this, 30 days to do this, 30 days to do this. And they'll say, well, but I've got this outstanding circumstance where I need to have this done by this day and I need to have this done this day. You get the occasional again, 911. Everything, yeah, 911, right? And again, because so many people want to make the sale, all of a sudden they'll find themselves in the placating game or the, you know, the breaking their own SOPs game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We, we could, we could expedite that by a couple of weeks and we could, we could rush that and we can rush this. And first off, in my opinion, what that does is it actually brings down your level of credibility because all, they know like, in the back of their mind, you're already breaking your own rules, right? So in their mind, they're going, Okay, for a second, this person looks super organized and, and, and they had their processes and it's, it's their way is the right way. And all of a sudden now they're w willing to do it my way. And that conversation in the back of their head is going, okay, now this feels like a sale, right? Yeah, yeah. And for me, I'm like, no, we don't, we're not going to rush that. We're not going to do that in that timeline because this is what has to happen to get the result. This is what it takes. This is, this is the amount of people it requires. And subsequently, this is what it costs, right? And, and when people then come back and say, well, you know, I don't, we, you know, that's a big investment. I don't think we have the amount of capital for that. I never, ever, ever reduce my price, right? Okay. There have, that's, that's a lie. There have been very weird, rare exceptions where I thought somebody was so much of a unicorn. I've given them a discount for a short amount of time, but I've said they have to pay it on the back end. So I'm not losing money, but maybe I've moved the money around a little bit, right? But for the most part, if they can't afford it, I would never reduce the cost on my services to fit them where they're at. I simply tell them their business isn't at a mature enough level yet to justify the investment of working with us. And I would love to work with them. I'm wholeheartedly willing to commit to that, but they probably need to come back in six months. And you have no idea how many people have appreciated that honesty that I would tell them that. And I would tell them, I don't want you financially stressed out. I don't want you looking at the bank account every single day because of me. If that's gonna be the position that you're in today, uh, you, I don't wanna work with you right now. Come back to me in six months when you're at that point and you can make this investment in your in your business with a clear conscience and not be panicky. Because if you're panicky, you're going to make me panicky. You're going to freak out my team. All of a sudden, they're going to start making mistakes. It's going to be a toxic environment. Right, right. I don't want it. Yep. Right? And listen, it's a good position to be in when you can actually deter or turn people away. To, to, uh, and, uh, and you know. Push you know prospects away, right? If they're not qualified. I mean, very, very. Very few business owners today, unfortunately, in our position where they cannot take the business. And I think that becomes a very liberating position to ultimately be in when you don't need the business. You want the business and you can be selective with who you choose and who you do business with. That's where you want to get to. I, uh, hopefully that a yeah, lot of the I advice we give to, on the show will get you there. Yeah. And I think that you have to, there's a, there's a piece of that where you're correct. Like you've got to earn your way into that position, but yeah, that you doesn't do. change you, the you, fact. You graduate into that spot. But, but it doesn't change the fact that you should never be making commitments of things that you can do just to make the sale, right. especially if you can't do them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because you will be exposed very quickly, especially when you're talking about premium products. When you sell a premium product, the level of expectation of what you're going to deliver is way up here. You better do what you said you were going to do. You better do it in the timeline. You said you were going to do it. You better under promise and over deliver. Yep, agreed. Right. So you have to have very clear expectations set with the prospect of what you do, what you don't do, when it's going to get done by, what the outcome should be expected, who's going to be involved, 
What are the next steps? This should all be crystal clear in your mind and mapped out to the prospect before you make the sale. And what I tell my team, as you're well aware, Andrew, is that the moment that a prospect asks me what happens next, we have failed. So what you're saying is a step ahead is key. You need to be a step ahead. You have to know ex all the things they're going to worry about, all the things they're going to be expecting, have it crystal clear laid out and make sure that you follow through on every single item. Because if you don't, you don't, people start freaking out Yep. because they just invested a huge amount of money. And all of a sudden what you said was going to happen isn't lining up with, with <laughs> what you said was going to happen. Yeah. The congruence, the congruency going, piece is huge, right? Oh my goodness. Right. So I don't know if there's anything you want to, more you want to add to presentation, expectations, flow, market to message match. You know, we could do a whole episode on this. The only thing I want to say is, is, is to piggyback off what you just said is setting expectations is the, 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 the two words I want to leave you with here on this particular segment is making sure the client, the member, the customer knows the next steps, right? Setting expectations so there's no ambiguity will just eliminate so much drama and stress. Because like you Absolutely. said, that's that's a trigger that there might be breakage in the process somewhere. If somebody goes, okay, we did all this. Now, where do we go from here? To your example, right? Oh, that is a so, nightmare. But this is a big tip, right? This is a big tip. So if that happens along the way, that means there's a hole you need to plug. Good yep. to know, right? It might happen once in a while. I mean, there's no perfect process and that's why processes evolve. That's a great trigger point for you to say, how do we close that hole so that somebody doesn't ask at this point again, right? Yeah, and, and you're, like you said, it's a process, right? We've had to, to look at repetitive issues, and if it happens more than three times, we figure out how do we fill this void so that it doesn't happen again. It's a process, right? Yeah. And part of that process is pillar number two. There we go. Which is, if you're gonna sell premium price products, you need to make sure that you have an airtight agreement, right? So some people, they'll, 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 they'll do the purchase first and then they'll send the agreement and some people will do the agreement first and then they'll do the purchase, right? There's pros and cons to both, but either way, there has to be an airtight agreement, a proposal and an agreement in, is, is how I like to combine them together, right? And the reason why you need to have this is that if your message to market match is on point, like we just talked about, yeah. and you actually have the solution, then what happens with the prospect is in the presentation or in the sales call, inside of their, their heart and inside of their mind, they are celebrating. They may not show it to you, but they are so excited that they found you. And, and, and it's a relief. When you buy a solution, it's a relief. At it's least, a huge relief, it, and, right? And, the, and the, the, the key is, can you keep that relief level, that excitement level high? Well, I was actually gonna go the other way, but your point is valid as well, right? Is think about the last time you were just so excited and you were in a conversation with somebody and, and you know when your vibration's super high and you're like, blah, 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 and then we're gonna do this and then blah, 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 and then we're gonna do this. And blah, blah. What, what ends up happening often is you forget the actual details of the conversation because you were caught up in the energy of it, yep, yep. right? And this is what happens with a lot of prospects is they're so excited about your solution. They met you, they got the, you got their thing that they need, that they're, they, they're, you're telling them what's going to happen next and you're telling them what's included and it goes in one ear and right out the other because they're vibrating at such a high level, right? So this is where you got to have an airtight agreement. And the airtight agreement's got to be like, this is what we do. This is what we don't do. Here's the timelines of when it's going to be executed. Here's what's going to happen if something goes wrong. Here's what's going to be the expectation at the end. You know, here's things outside of scope, Here's what they would cost if we go outside of scope. Here's how you reach out if you want something else. Like you literally have to think through every single detail that you talked about and what you include and what you don't. And you have to put it in front of them again so it is crystal clear exactly what you talked about so that when they start to come on board, and inevitably this happens almost with every client, they go, well, I thought you said you did this, or I thought we were going to be able to accomplish this in this timeline, or I thought this, or I thought this. You can say, I understand the question, or I understand the concern, right? If you, if you think back to the first conversation we had, I said this, this, and this. Here's the agreement. 
where it said reiterated the same thing, this, 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 and this, right? That's why we're doing things this way. That's why it's taking this amount of time. That's that, it, all black and white. And if you want more than that, no problem. We can create a solution for you. But as you can see very clearly here, which we also talked about very clearly here, this was the game plan from day one and this is what was included. Airtight. Right? Because if you don't have that, and Andrew, you and I see this all the time. All the time. They will say, but, but your salesperson said this, or you said this, or your material said this, right? And now you're in a he said, she said game, which is, num which is number one why you should always record your calls. But it's a he said, she said game. And then people get emotional and they get defensive and they get weird, right? <laughs> We laid it out here, step one, then we gave you the agreement, step two. As you can see crystal clear right here, this is what we said we're gonna do, this is what we're doing, right? And if you want more, I'm happy to create an additional proposal for you to do more. And it just stops the drama right in the tracks. Yep, that's and so air, few air, that's people airtight, do. and very few are airtight today. Very loose today, a lot of looseness today. I can't tell you how many people are selling premium products with no agreement. Oh my gosh, this all. is a really important piece is the airtight language agreement contract, however you want to term it. And it just goes back again to expectations. Yep. It's just reinforcing what you said in black and white. Everybody's signing it. Everybody's on the same page, right? So that there is no ambiguity in what's going to happen next, what's included, what's not, who's responsible for what, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. Can always, right? always resort back to it. You can always resort back to me. I mean, Andrew, how many times have you and I run into that scenario where someone says, I thought you said it would be done in this amount of time or your salesperson said this was included or blah, 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 blah. And then the agreement states what was said. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, understood because we have them. But how many times have customers gone off the rails saying to us, I thought I was getting this or I thought – we, I probably see it happen. I mean, you just redid our agreements, right? So right. for Pipeline Pro, for our done-for-you services, which we, which is it's always good to audit these things yearly, biannually, right? Sure. We just did that probably the second time in 2021. So twice a year, look at these things, maybe once a quarter. Right. And I probably see it happen like one out of 10 clients, one out of eight clients where they're, they might think they get something that wasn't in the presentation and or the agreement. Happen. And how, and how, so what is that? Is that, that's 15, 20% of the time. That's a yeah, big number. But that's, that's a lot of people, right? And people. how confident and sure of themselves are they that this is what I was promised that you can almost not have a rational conversation with them because they're so emotionally charged about it, which is why you have these things. And in you play. even, you even get the random person who throws something in that was actually never even said which I think is comical at times. Right. <laughs> so be prepared, right? Right. We had, I tell you a funny story, Aaron. We had a guy, I was overseeing one of these projects the other day. And we, one of the things we do internally with Pipeline Pro is we do done for you services. So we build funnels, we build, you know, we'll do full CRM setups. We'll put project management teams on for these business owners. It's really great to have that option. Very few software companies do. They just sort of leave you hanging on a, on a membership or a subscription. And we can, we can literally deploy teams to build funnels, Set up camp, right? Copy, set up the CF, design, right? Copy, do amazing graphic design. But one of the services we do is we will write, research, and craft a video sales letter inside of a client's funnel. Normally, twenty to thirty minutes. Great presentation, right? All, all with information given by the client. And I said, I was on one of these intake calls, and I said to the to the prospects, I said, okay, so once we deliver this slide deck, all the copy and beautiful design branded to your company. Um, do you need any advice on how to record it? Do you need like, my, what, what can we, if you've never done it, what can we show you that would help you deliver that, that, you know, do that presentation? Oh, we, we, we're, I'm, we're, I'm definitely not doing it. I'm not recording anything. The sales guy said that you would be hiring somebody to record it for me, <laughs> which isn't even a thought process. Like we would never in a million years get a voice over to do a pitch for you, the business owner for your business. Right. Of course, of course, I looped back yep. to the salesperson. Oh, the Check sales the sale guy call. said that you were going to provide a voiceover for me to do the pitch. I'm like, I've never actually even heard that. I've never seen it done. Um, but I'll definitely go back and, and listen to the presentation and look at the agreement. And of course, it was never even mentioned anywhere. Sales guy didn't even mention it. Naturally, it's not in the agreement because it's not done. So that happens at times too, which is which is interesting is 
the total Hail Mary to see if I can get something done. That and you know what? If that happened three oh or four more times, then right? there could be a hole somewhere. Yeah. We would go into the agreement and bowl. Or go into the sales pitches and say, guys, is there like some sort of like, are you slipping in a service that doesn't exist? So this is, you know, we, you and I talk a lot about auditing things yep. in the sales process. That's again, if something comes up more than once, what is the saying? If there's, where there's smoke, there's fire. Yep. If it comes up a couple of times, look at that. That might, there might be a hole or there might be a script or there might be a message off somewhere. Not Or there's just something you can put in. Like maybe you underline in the agreement, you know, we will not record your presentation for you. You will be required to record if the voiceover. You might have to yeah, add, add a layer of, of, add a layer of protection there, right? If, I, yeah. I, I can tell you that that will be the first and the last time I ever see that. It was just a, a kind of a cute story. <laughs> we'll, anything. See. Right? we'll see. We'll but see. But if I hear it a second time, then I might actually add an agreement to your point here, Aaron, is when we craft the presentation and design it and make it perfect, we will not be recording it for you. That is on you to record or hire somebody on your team to do. Absolutely. You wouldn't think you would have to say that, but hey, maybe you do. The point of this conversation here today is maybe you do, but the more I's you have dotted, the more T's you have crossed, the cleaner, smoother, better of an organization and process you have. And that's really what we're after here. Selling more with less resistance means all I's dotted, all T's crossed, but it doesn't mean an I becomes undotted once in a while. It doesn't mean that a T can't become uncrossed once in a while. That's normal. It's an evolution. Or a letter just gets added into the alphabet that you didn't know existed, so you right. got to deal with it. Right. Right, right on. Right on. <laughs> so, yeah. The, the, so we've got we got two pillars here. Right. Right. We've got airtight agreement. Right. Yes. Crystal clear on expectations. Right. Now, now, and this is where this is where so many people drop the ball, and this is one of the things that you tend to rant on because it drives you crazy. This is where the rubber meets the road, baby. Right. You've you've sold the, the prospect. They've signed the agreement. Funds have exchanged hands. You've so already bought your you've already bought your bottle of Dom Perignon. It's already been delivered, right? You're toasted. And so many businesses think that the job is done. Oh, hence, boy. hence the Dom P, right? <laughs> he disastrous, <laughs> right? The moment that that prospect sends you funds, they start sliding off a cliff. Now the buyer's remorse. And the fear start kicking in bit by bit by bit. Did by bit. we make the right decision? That was a lot of money. Uh, Are these guys the real deal? I was really excited Monday, but now it's a Wednesday and I'm not so sure. <laughs> yeah, I just got another bill human, in the mail. By the way, human my nature. car broke down. Human nature. Absolutely. Human nature. Buyer's remorse, humor's nature. Don't take buyer's remorse as an insult. It's human oh. nature. We always question something expensive that we buy, even if everything was done right. So now we need to attack because the excitement wears We off. need to attack keeping engagement, excitement, and enthusiasm high. And that's where we start talking about onboarding. Right. Right? Speed to lead in your onboarding is everything. Right? Clear. So this is how crazy you and I are. Right? We give the presentation. Then we do the airtight agreement. Then first day we bring a prospect into our project management system, Basecamp, and we post the schedule Again, the very first day, this is this is what's going to happen. Here are your timelines. Right away, introduced to an onboarding specialist. Very first day, that person is reaching out to them immediately, connecting with them live. A lot of on the phone, by the way, not just the email. Hi, oh. now a lot of outbound calls to make sure you got the email. Did you get the text? Do you have the login? That's what very few do, which Can makes me irate together? as you know for a quick tour of what you just got access to. The good right? old fashioned telephone, now Zoom blink, right, is Everything. big. Right, where that person feels, this is the key, where that person knows you're a business that serves multiple clients at a time, but feels like they're the most important client to you at that moment, mm -hmm. right? They know what's gonna happen next, they're communicated with right away, they're given an outline of their next steps. They get they get shown where, if they have any questions, they can reach out at any time. They're white gloved through the process. So it is completely opposite to what 
the fear conversation is that's happening in their mind. Oh, these guys are going to take too long. Oh, these guys aren't going to get back to me. Oh, I'm just going to be another number. Oh, I'm just going to fall through the cracks. No, 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 no. White glove service to support your purchase. And what we find, Andrew, is that it takes about a week of that white glove service before they finally go. To oh. just settle, to, to what I call just to settle down nerves. Just to settle down the nerves and go, okay, I and, really And by the make- way, on that point, so think about your premium price products and service, right? Yeah. What that whole week, let's call it seven to 10 days. Yep. Seven to 10 days should be mapped out like an assembly line. Here's Absolutely. what happens on day one. Here's what happens on day two. Here's what happens on day four. Here's what happens on day six. Maybe it's something every day. Maybe day one is a phone call. Maybe day two is a scheduling. Maybe, day, right? So if you have a checklist, I always use the analogy of when a, when a pilot takes off and turns that plane on and, and seals those doors, you and I both know there is a very clean, clear checklist of probably 16 or 17 items that have to take place for that plane to get up to its altitude, ideal altitude, right? It's the same concept. There's no way they're winging it. They, they probably memorize it, of course. But at some point, it was a diligent, diligent template with multiple points, checkpoints that they go down one by one by one by one, never deviating, right? Well, and, and, and not only do I agree with you, I want to give people real world numbers to back this up. So one of the companies that I own, the, we spent a year improving our onboarding process because we, we saw holes, we were getting asked what's next all the time, we had questions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? To where now it is so high touch and so organized and so streamlined that in the last 12 months alone, that company has generated $200,000 in referrals all within the first week of the client coming on board because they were so blown away with the onboarding process. And they didn't even get a result yet. They hadn't even got a result yet. That this is the onboarding process. They were like, you guys are so on top of this, so professional. I felt so taken care of that I had to refer you to my other That's friend incredible. here who has XYZ challenge. Would you be willing to speak to him? Absolutely, I would. That's incredible. From the onboarding process. That is incredible. That's a huge win. Huge Now win. imagine if they get them a result. That's another layer. Oh, I mean, that's where everybody gets their referrals from is they go, oh, well, I have to get the, the result first before somebody would send me a referral. No, 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 no. Just the experience that you deliver and how you take care of people in the beginning is often enough for them to give you a referral because you have under-promised and vastly over-delivered on the experience. Right on, right on. Right? Yep. So I just want to support that with a real world example Mm -hmm. where I take pride in the fact that people message me constantly and say, man, this onboarding experience has been amazing. Your team is on it. And I'm like, God, that makes me feel so good because it, it's 90%. Like if you're good at what you do, you know that you're going to get the result, but that first piece is so critical to calm the nerves, to get the person in the rhythm, to to reduce the buyer's remorse, to get them bought into your process. It is, and if you don't, the, they question everything from that point it's, forward. It's it's the old you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. It's the courting piece. You are courting, you right? The relationship. That's a great word. You already made the sale. You're still courting for You're, at least the, the next It's courting process. It's like any relationship, male, female, prospect, customer, right? I mean, things don't really, it's a psychology of psychology, right? Yep. Courting, onboarding, all part of the same psychology. Hold on one sec. What do you got? Uh, you got, you have a, a, a contractor there at your house? Nope, son walking in the door. <laughs> During sales velocity TV, unacceptable. Um, that kid he just got, he is, just got this that one. kid is grounded. <laughs> that kid is one. grounded, nope. and if you don't do it, I will. <laughs> Should I be eleven to twelve Fridays? You got to be kidding me, pal. Yep. He just he just rolled in with his iPad. He was probably going to ask uh, me if he could buy a, a video game or something, and I was like, no, no school today. Beat it. Um, we actually, uh, I don't know if we want to go off on this tangent, bro. I know you, I know, I know this will send you into a deep, we, we pulled 
all of our kids out of school uh, 10 days early because we're coming to the US uh, to Scottsdale for Christmas. We had to cancel our travel to Canada because they changed all of the testing protocols and it was a big gamble. Oh, Canada's a nightmare. Whether we would even get in or not. Yeah, right? Canada's full on dictatorship. Yeah, so I just canceled the whole thing and moved it all to Scottsdale. But wow, we I didn't even know. There's still five of us that got to pass a PCR test leaving here to get into the United States. Uh, so, so you're just trying to keep it simple? I'm, we basically quarantined the whole family for 10 days because I'm like, that, that, that is a non-refundable big commitment to the United States. So, so they're just, they just cut out of school a little bit before the end of the year. Yeah, I just okay. took them out early. I thought when you said took them out, they were out for good. I was like, we, no. that's a whole different show. <laughs> no, no, I just pulled them out early before Christmas because it just reduces you. the the chance of one of us popping before our trip. Yeah, so. that makes sense. That makes sense. But uh, yeah, it's funny. We, Aaron and I have, have two sons almost the same age. My son is... Who is my son's one year older or one year younger? I always my son just turned ten. Okay, so my son's about to turn eleven in two weeks. So he's one year yeah. older. That's funny. Yeah. I have an eleven about to be eleven. You have a just turned ten. They're almost exactly a year apart. So yeah, I've got a it's 10, an interesting age. This, this, this the ten year old age is interesting, man. It's like they're they're kind of at that that transition point between being a little kid, your little baby, to. Are we like pushing adolescent here? I don't. I'm, you're yeah, the, they kind of got still half yeah, in, the, in the ether and half is in reality. Yes, or, it's this. I'm that in between period. I mean, you know it because you have older ones already. But this is my first oldest, so I'm, you know, probably going to come to you for some advice on you know what do I do at eleven, <laughs> then twelve, then thirteen, then fourteen, then fifteen? Because you're you're already at how old? Soleil? She's seventeen. Eight, she's eighteen. Yeah. So you're you got you got you got a good eight year runway on me there. So. Yeah, um, I've seen it all, my man. Yeah, you've seen it all. So good stuff today. Good good three pillars. Um, easy to, easy to follow, easy to mess up, common to mess up by not having the air tightness from step one to step two to step three. Final thoughts. Absolutely. And if you put these things in play, watch your stress levels go down, Mm. right? One of our companies that, that we were recently working on, Andrew, in the fulfillment area, they were stressed out like crazy, right? And it was because... Agreements weren't in place. SOPs weren't in place. Not enough communication was in place. We put all those things in place. Creates a lot of franticness, right? A lot of franticness. Yeah. A lot of uh, a lot of like chaos and frustration from the company side, from the client side, whatever. We put all of these things in place about a month ago in one of our companies. And how quickly did it go like this? Sweet. Yeah, it's worth the time. It, it, it's worth the time. You you have to. You, you only have so much energy, and you have to keep stress all this to a minimum. But nothing worse than the stress coming from a client that paid for a premium product or service because that. It, it, if you start off the wrong way, the lesson here, then sometimes it's a black eye that doesn't go away, and there's a retention piece too. Retention because maybe you're on a ninety day contract, maybe you're on a six month contract. They're already thinking about getting out. I mean, who wants to start? the relationship with thinking about how do I get out of the relationship? It's a, right. it's a, it's a heck of a place to be. So not the most exciting topic. Of course, the most exciting topic is how do you sell premium price products and services? Not the most exciting piece is how do you make the process airtight all the way through so that you have energy and enthusiasm high right from the get go and it doesn't go away. But you know what though? We talk about this a lot. You don't want to scale into a leaky boat. Yeah. That's right. right? If you don't have that foundation in place, your business will be a mess. It will be stressful all the time. Reputation gets banged up. Mm -hmm. You know, if you put these things in play from day one or tomorrow, if you're listening to this, then you just have this feeling of peace and freedom to be like, hey, I can I can grow this without stress. I mean, the processes are in place. The experience is solid. You know, when you're on that shaky foundation. Right, it's almost like Russian roulette, and you're always I mean, worried. Who wants to be in business and always yeah. be worried? Right, no, worst that's, feeling that's, in the world, always being worried, 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 bi- worried. Somebody's businesses are supposed to be boring. Yeah, and, and here's, so and here's people- the thing: don't even think for a minute that you're going to do this on an island. If you're not thinking team, staff, operations to help here, not only does it take a ton of stress off you, but it actually positions you in a different light. So if you're a one man or a two man or a three man show, you may need to staff up to get this right. And it's a very good investment to take st- two steps back to ultimately take three steps forward. It really Absolutely. is. So just people make this thing really go. The right people, good quality, concierge style people make you look great. Absolutely. So surround yourself with good people 
when when implementing this process would be my would be my takeaway before we wrap it up. Couldn't agree with you more. All right, my man. We'll be back next week, everybody. Same time, same place. Live on Fridays at eleven AM Eastern at the Public Sales Velocity TV Facebook page. As always, all past episodes on video and in audio are at salesvelocitytv.com. I'm Andrew, that's Aaron. We'll see you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Sales Velocity TV is powered by Pipeline Pro, the ultimate all-in-one sales pipeline management and marketing automation platform that makes all others obsolete. And we can prove it. Take a tour at gopipelinepro.com. See you on the next episode.